Hello everyone, welcome back to Court of Swords. It's time for a special arc here. Uh, we're going three shows, but the third show is going to be eight hours, so technically four sessions. Um, there's many names for this. It could be called the Halloween arc. It could be called the Primordial arc. It could be called the Dahor arc. Um, we might even create some throughout the show. Uh, I think Adam wants to go with Primordial. I'm okay with Halloween. Horror works, I think, for both of us. It just sounds like we're saying horror, though, and that's it does. confusing. It does. The, way, the, way, the way you say horror, it does. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, that last R just doesn't exist for me or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so we'll figure it out. It'll get better named over, over the course of the show. Uh, you might be wondering where Dan is. It's horror month for him. So <laughs> he's doing a bunch of stuff on his stream, and uh, he'll be back in the beginning of November. But uh, in his place, we've got stand in for Court of Swords, the, the ultimate stand in. We've got Cinnamon Toast Ken. Who's always here yeah. whenever we need him. We just, ultimate yeah, we just whistle. Ultimate stand in. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we couldn't get anybody else to do it. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing, please. I would love to play. <laughs> it's not true at all. It's not true at all. It's, it's complete. It's, it's true, but don't tell him that. Uh, so yeah, Ken's going to be joining us. And then, uh, first time around the show is Aurelian. Hi. Who's dressed up like her character. She doesn't normally dress like this. <laughs> Me too. Mine is, uh, a very big uh, advocate of Soylent. Oh, nice. Big nice. You character. got that shirt. Those shirts That's are really comfortable, comfy. aren't they? Yeah. Sure. This is yeah. really great. Yeah, there's Soylent in that shirt, believe it or not. Yeah. You can actually just, put it water in it. And if you your pores. Yeah. Yeah. If you miss the Patreon uh, character creation video, Max will be paying uh, Soylar the Mighty. Uh, <laughs> a we got to pay the bills, guys. Talking to the group, be like, you know what? We could take a longer short rest, or we could use my magical Soylent potion. <laughs> Why take a long rest when you can just drink this delicious soy potion and rejuvenate your body and your mind? Exactly. Yeah, it's perfect. That's great. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. You got to work in those brands into the show. It's just... We've been telling we you this you. is going to be happening. We, yeah, we said we were exactly. going to do it's it. It's not like we didn't talk about this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I think we we'll kind of skip the, the pregame chatter here because we do have some some character introductions and uh, just a short amount of time. This is actually on a timeline with like the 16 hours that we have. So we want to try to put as much game in here as possible. Um, but yeah, you should know everyone around here. Not any uh, any new faces, but familiar ones for sure with Aurelian, uh, Max, always on uh, Court of Swords and Adam, of course, DMing. So. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just toss it off. We, we don't usually do this this quick, Adam, but <laughs> take it away. <laughs> uh, well, I want to talk a little bit about how your characters uh, know each other because it ended up that y'all are uh, basically a bunch of like outcast weirdos, um, right? Did, like, yeah, it did. There are there are humans in this world. Humanity is a is a sort of burgeoning race that's starting to get bigger and bigger and take up more and more space, but. Uh, you are you are not among them. Um, so we have a an outsider, an outcast, and then two like nature boys. So we should probably figure out, yeah, like how how the group of you got together because normally you can't really survive on your own in this world. like the the loner, tough and cool usually just gets eaten by a god, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you don't live in a village, if you don't have a community and a family to to support you, um, you know you got to have tough friends, which I think is probably part of this situation. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about that. Um, I mean, the most obvious connection are uh, is Yom and um, Akishnagal, right? The two of you have some some connection already. Yeah, um, Ken's playing a uh, berserker druid. I'm playing a druid. Uh, you're a hill dwarf. Who wandered too far away from the hill into my, uh, I guess, domain, as it were. Um, and I kind of, usually when people wander into the grasslands, they're spooked away. They don't want to be there. We, we've kind of set up our scarecrows, if you will. Um, and most people will just run from those because they're, they're terrifying looking. But for whatever reason, the Hilldorf was uh, curious enough to keep wandering. Um, and I think we've probably known each other for... I would say a while. I don't know if we need to pin a time to it, but uh, but yeah, I've kind of taught you the ways of of druid craft a little bit. Um, yeah, so you, so being a, a barbarian and filled with the rage, you've you've taken your your druid teachings and tried to teach me a nice balance and right, right. We don't we I don't keep people out of the uh, the grasslands from fear of actually wanting to hurt them or anything. It's them hurting the grasslands. 
Uh, yeah, the grass the grasslands in this case are a uh, sort of a buffer. They're a space between. Um, there are basically three sort of biomes in the region that you're you're in. Um, there's the the dark forest. Uh, there's the mountain, uh, and then there's these. Um, this sort of like area between the woods and the grasslands where uh, there's a human village. Um, and the grasslands act as sort of a buffer between the mountains and the forest. Uh, and the humans kind of live in the, the area between those. Um, so, yeah, it maybe is there, and I guess, JB, you can help me understand this. Is there a taboo for or for entering the grasslands? Like, are they, the humans, have they, they sworn a, like a, um, uh, a pact with the the gods of the grasslands to keep out or well i think it's more just uh, the humans need resources and they were you know getting into the forest and eventually they kind of took too much for their own good and uh the the spirits of the forest didn't enjoy that didn't like the fact that they were just constantly tearing it up um and so they had some sort they, there is some sort of pact i wasn't privy to the information or, or at the uh at the pact signing so to speak um, but I do know that it exists. Um, and so I'm kind of kind of like the, the gatekeeper. So if anyone does wander off, I, I make sure they get back to where they're going without harming them. Okay. So you, you don't serve, you don't serve the forest directly. Um, the, because the forest, so the forest, uh, Vana, it's the name of the forest and it's God, uh, the, the forest and, and his, his spirits, um, they, they, he has druids that serve him, but you're not, you're not among them. Um, no, I would say I'm, I'm not necessarily on loan, but, uh, I'm kind of new around here. I'm, I'm one, one of my, one of, one of the only, I guess, four bulgs in the, in the area. And he's much more akin to, uh, creatures of the, the forest basically. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. he kind of shuns me in that sense, but he does know that, you know, I can't keep people out. Uh, and so he's kind of left that to me and they handle all the, political aspects of it where I just kind of keep people out. Yeah. So why, why are you alone? Like where, where is your tribe? Where are the other fur bulks? What, what happened? Are you in exile or did you leave them or are they dying off? Like what, what's the deal? Uh, I think there we're just kind of solidarity. We, we enjoy our solidarity. We, we don't really travel in packs too much. Uh, if we do, it's, it's for, um, familial reasons. Like we're raising a kid or something like that. But, Kids are kind of rare within our, our culture. Um, okay. I'm 400 years old, so <laughs> I'm a little bit older uh, than, than most other races. I've, I've kind of seen the, the passing of, of time much longer than uh, other people, so I understand a little bit better and understand kind of the cycle. Um, and so eventually I just kind of left my, my familial uh, group and kind of ventured out on my own. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, and so that's how you, that's how you find your way into this, uh, this part of the, this part of the world. Yep. Okay. Um, but you keep your, you keep your distance from the, from the humans, right? You're, you're mostly on your own. Yeah. For re for obvious reasons. I mean, I, I'm seven foot tall. I, I don't look like a, a human, uh, and humans are kind of, uh, afraid of what they don't understand. Yes. Humans are stupid and superstitious. It's true. Yep. Um, so Let's let's talk about let's talk about Yam a little bit then. So, you know, in there you're a Hildorf, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. So the the <clears throat> area the the area around the sort of the foothills of Mount Parvat. Uh, Parvat is the mountain god that that lives in the in the smoky distance, um, and he's a he's a mighty mountain, and uh, Parvat has dwarves that live uh, among his bones, um, but they are they're the mountain tribes. Uh, you're, you're a hill dwarf. Are there other hill dwarves? Uh, are hill dwarves like a lesser form of mountain dwarf? Um, are, are you yourself like an exile from, from Mount Parvat or, uh, do you have like a people that all live in the, in the lower hills? I'd say there's probably, there's a, there's a people live in lower hills. They once many, many, many moons ago were part of the mountain tribe, but then themselves a family was exiled and, um, the Oak and Toe family. <laughs> and uh, myself in that tribe, I have been sent on kind of a, maybe a, almost like a spiritual cleansing, I guess you would say, uh, the grandfather, grandfather Okinto, the shaman or the leader of our community, uh, saw that I was not fit to lead or be considered until I went out and 
got my rage and my issues under control. So that's that's a personal thing. That's you, right? Yeah, it's not me. okay. All right. So there's there's a part of you that's and so I guess then the 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 dwarves that's not a, a normal thing for them. They don't um, like value the the berserker rage. This is a thing that that you yourself has. Yeah, they do. They, I mean, the dwarves they enjoy a good a good rough time, but uh, not so much just blonde rage and it's it's not fit for okay. the shaman's grandson. Okay, so there are in the in the foothills there are there are still um, like dwarf villages, um, but you're not a part of them. No, not currently. You, not, until I, okay. not until I. Not until I've. It's, they left it up to me to decide when I have can prove myself, and I haven't yet reached that state in my own mind. Okay, so you'll 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 decide when it's time to return. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so the two of you are like natives to this this region. Then um, you're uh, you, you've lived. How old? How old are you, um, Yom? Uh, Yom is a fairly young dwarf, maybe only 45, 50 years old. Mm, okay. Uh, and how long have you been uh, with um, uh, with JP's character with uh, Akish Nagal? Hmm. Would you say like? Probably 10, 10 years. Yeah, I, I would think it's kind of uh, like it was the gradual friendship, right? Like you, you overstepped your boundaries once. I made sure that you didn't come back, but I was kind of like, why? Well, he seems a little, maybe I can help him. And then you came back, you know, next week, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. And then over a longer amounts of time, we couldn't even understand each other, I guess, when we first met. Um, and over time, we've kind of learned how to speak each other's tongues, et cetera. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And the furbogs are are like peaceful creatures by nature, right? So you you have right. some insight into taming your your inner rage. Yep. Yeah, I dig that. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so the two of you kind of like wander. What do you do like together on an on an average day? Do you like have a? Is there like a hut that you you live in, or do you wander the the plains and the the forest? Like, what is what does your life look like? Um, I'm not sure what, what Yom does day to day, but for me, I'm, I'm tending to the grasslands, making sure that no one's overstepped their boundaries. We, we have different, uh, you could call them scarecrows, but they're really just like gigantic, hideous four antlered skeletal structures in the middle of the fields that kind of keep people away. Um, mm. and if I do see people coming too close, you know, I'll druid craft them. So their eyes light up or something like that and, and spook them out of the, out of the grasslands okay. that way. Um, and okay. so maybe that's what, uh, uh, Yom is, is kind of following me around, helping me with that, rebuilding the, the statues if they do get destroyed oh, yeah. from weather. Giving you a hand, learning, yeah. learning things. Right. Tending, tending the effigies. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Well, and it's important, right? Because the, the spirits of the, the spirits of the grassland and like, uh, Mount Parvat would be mad if you let these humans uh, leave their leave their village and uh, get too close to the uh, to the hills. Yeah, I think there's also like a political treaty with with the dwarves, but I wasn't privy to any of that, so I'm more lenient yeah, I mean the, with them. The but dwarves we still don't want them in here. Yeah, the mountain dwarves, same thing. Like you're keeping them apart too. The mountain dwarves, sure. um, they they're like they're Parvat's children and his servants, and they live they live inside of him and tend to his his fires. Um, but, uh, yeah, you want to keep them and the humans sort of apart, uh, in some parts of the world, humans and, and dwarves, uh, mingle readily, but not here. Uh, I don't think. Right. Okay, cool. All right. So you, you tend to those and sort of keep an eye on things and just make sure that the, the, the boundaries are clear. Okay. All right. So, um, S Salix, uh, are you now you're, you're a tiefling. Yep. Uh, which, and you're alive and you got to grow up. So that's unusual. <laughs> Yeah. Um, now this, this village, this nameless human village is just the village, um, that's in this area. Is that the village of your misbegotten birth or is it, uh, is it new? Like, are you, are you new to this area or have you been like hiding out here since you were born? Yeah. So for the majority of my life, I've been able to stay relatively hidden. Uh, I grew up with just my mom out in the forest kind of on our own. So, right, because that's that's the choice that your mother would have, right? Either right. like get rid of you or become an exile. Right. So, and so does she? Does she live, or or did she live in um, 
in the 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 proper like woods because there's some some like light woods, but you that wouldn't really hide you from from no, people if they were looking for you out in in the woods, not anywhere that anyone would like happen to stumble upon. Sure. You'd have to be on purpose trying to find it um, in order to get there, and that's <clears throat> done intentionally to try to protect me from getting killed or stoned or whatever it is okay. awful humans would do. Um, and so we're, we live out there. She's uh, blind. And so the majority of the time has been trying to figure out how to take care of her. Mm-hmm. And I'm leaving to go to this area for the first time because she's sick and I can't leave her there. So mm-hmm. the only way to try to figure out how to help her is to go get something uh, to take back to see if okay. I can somehow save her. Sure. And whose whose idea was this? Like, where did you where did you get the idea to leave the the woods and and Vana's protection? Um, that's my my call. So mm-hmm. having stayed in the woods for you know the first twenty five ish years of my life, uh, we've depended on a lot of uh, herbalism and hunting and mm-hmm. kind of old wives tale potions to kind of get us through. And then it's managed to work till now. But sure. after running through all of the typical things that we would do to try to cure this thing that ails her, none of them are working. And so it's a a last ditch effort where I have to risk going in front of people and finding out what they might do to me, uh, in Mm -hmm. order to do what's best for her. So, um, yeah, every, I don't know, like every, there's a specific like holiday, like maybe every full moon or every new moon, um, your, your mother would send you away for, for a night. Okay. Um, and she would she would have a visitor. There was a, a man you only ever knew uh, uh, to call him the green man. Um, and he would come and like visit your home and you were sent away for for a night and you were able to return uh, the next morning. And your mother never spoke of her uh, her relationship with the green man or who he was. Um, but he would he would always come at the same time every uh, every month to visit her. Um and uh, yeah, I think as as she got older and sicker, he visited like less and less. So there would be there were several years like you haven't seen the Green Man in a long time, um, and uh, yeah, and that's about when your mother started to get sick. Uh, and so you left the you left the forest and headed uh, headed east because to the west there's just more forest. It just gets deeper and deeper and more and more dangerous. So there's only really one direction to go. Um, did you try to get help in the um, in the village, or did you just bypass those those humans altogether? Yeah, I'm just gonna bypass the humans altogether because yeah. I, there's the my whole life. I've been raised knowing that I was scary to people and that people weren't going to have like a welcome reception. So there's this balance, right, of not ever having been exposed to the human world, which is intimidating for me, but also being told your whole life that everyone will kill you. So you do, there's no there's no win for me there. So the best course of action is to try to um, find e- either a druid or somebody out there who can help her. Um, yeah. That's going to be more approachable and not kill me instantly or try to anyways. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so your, your journey would have taken you out of the forest through the, through the woods and then to, to the edge of the grasslands. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's where you met Yom and, um, uh, Yeah. How, how did that meeting go? Right. Like, cause the two of you, she's a demon spawn. She's bad news. She's, she's the product of a dark, a dark power. Um, but she, she was, she's looking for help. What, how did that go? Are you, uh, <laughs> like how humanoid do you look? Not at uh, all. Pretty human. Um, obviously, uh, there's two kind of golden giant ram horns, uh, on the top kind of coming out of her hair. And then, uh, my eyes are completely black, no pupil, no anything. So at first, like, from far away, maybe seemingly human and normal, but the closer you get, uh, the more intimidating and off-putting it becomes. Okay, I think it was yeah. sure. the, I'm, the I'm thing sure about, the was about, quite hostile first. <laughs> the thing about tieflings too is that there are like supernatural effects that occur in their presence too. Like milk will curdle, uh, animals will die spontaneously. Um, particularly domestic animals, wild animals seem less like this is a problem. Um, it really signs of civilization. Glass will crack, uh, that sort of thing. Roads grow over in towns where tieflings stay. Um, so civilized people know them to be uh, a curse. 
Um, and I think that the rest of you, um, you would know that they're dangerous by nature, but maybe not have the same bias. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I imagine if, if Yam was quite hostile, but then he was going to default to his, his Schnoogle bear to, to make the call. Master Schnoogle. <laughs> <laughs> Master Schnoogle, great. Uh, was it a traveled path that you're on, uh, Salix, or was this kind of the first time you've been out here? This is the first time I've been out here. Completely new. If there was a path, I didn't even know that there was one. Okay. I would assume I have uh, some sort of scouts kind of across the, the grasslands that if, if something comes into it, they'll, they'll get to me quickly. Uh, and so I, I caught wind of that. We scurried over to the, the area and kind of just found you wandering. We sat there and like watched you for a while to see what you were doing. Um, but it sounds like you were just wandering. You didn't really have a, a point to being in the area, correct? Yeah, just trying to see if there's anything that I can come across that would be helpful, a person, a building, a plant, anything that looks as if it would help me in my quest. Okay. Uh, yeah, then I, I think the meeting started off incredibly hostile, but <laughs> sure. Yom kind of, you know, wanted to go in. Uh, what, Yom, do you use an axe? What's your weapon? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, so I, great axe. Yeah, he wanted to go in axes ablazing, and uh, I kind of he said, "No, let's let's watch for a little while." And once we kind of determined that uh, you were not basically a human, we were super curious. We introduced ourselves, and kind of that's how we started the relationship. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, are you are you helping Salix find the cure to her mother's sickness? Uh, did you tell us about it, Salix? Uh, no. I wouldn't have told mm. you guys about it because it's a weakness. I, right. Okay. I would so just you're just for something a medicine. So you're just chilling. You're just chilling out with these guys. You're just yeah. Like, it's it's pretty obvious that something is being hidden because I don't know what I'm looking for and I can't explain why I need it. But it's I'm looking for a thing and when I know, I'll know. But I don't know right okay. now. And so <laughs> right now it's just trying to figure out and get my bearings straight because I know nothing about the world. I know the forest and I know herbalism and animals and I know that life, but mm -hmm. anything outside of that is completely foreign territory to me and I'm just on the defensive all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I was probably instructed by Vana then to, to figure out what what it is that Salix actually is to begin with and, and we're trying, trying to make sure that she's not here for the wrong reasons. Is it is it uh, Salix or Salix? Yeah, we've been we've been saying it multiple times. How do you want We're to doing pronounce it, both it Aaron? Salix. 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 Okay. okay. Salix, got it. <laughs> this Salix. is how it's gonna go, huh? Perfect. That's how it goes That's with everyone I play the games with. <laughs> yeah. JP's character's name is easy to pronounce. It's just you pronounce it the Sumerian way. Yeah, obviously. Ikishnagal. It's a great Ikishnagal. name. Ikishnagal. Exactly. Um. Okay, so the, the, the three of you have spent some time in the uh, in the grasslands using the the like sort of nomadic progression that the uh, the dwarf and the the furbolg follow to explore the grasslands for a cure, right? Looking for plants, seeking uh, animal uh, solutions, um, kind of keeping that secret, but but sticking with them to try to find that, but to to no avail so far. Um, and then at some point. At some point, uh, you either he stumbled across you or you stumbled across him. Um, Silent Thorn, you are definitely not from around here. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> and is this is this a place that you had intended to visit, or did you just kind of stumble upon it in your travels? Yeah, Thorn, he's more of a wanderer. Like he just he he uh of course from the Tabaxi and stuff like that. They're kind of clan derived. They're clan driven and they stick together. And at the first moment that he was able to leave the the clans and break away he always knew he didn't he didn't subscribe to that belief he didn't mm -hmm. like the shamans he didn't like the authority figures in there and he didn't like the tight-knit community that didn't trade with the outsiders and stuff he wanted to explore he wanted to see people out there so ever since you know i don't even know exactly we'll say like 20 2021 something like that he broke yeah. away from that when he realized he could and thought he could do it on his own and he's been wandering ever since just kind of going from town to town messing with people he's very uh very mischievous he um he's uh yeah he's kind of a little bit of an asshole but 
Um, yeah, he's just been wandering around. So I think this is something he just kind of came across in his travels and was like, hmm, this is interesting. So what was the what was the meeting between these three and uh, Silent Thorn like? Uh, and I guess how long ago was it? Right? Is this is this a recent? Uh, I don't say I'd say it's fairly like, recent. Yeah. I'd say it's fairly recent. Only maybe like a week or so or two two weeks ago. Um, so they're still kind of figuring him out, and he's kind of figuring them out. Um, but his interest in the, in the party and the three of them is just like, I have nothing else better to do right now. <laughs> sure. So we'll see what we'll see what's going on with them. I think okay. the meeting was probably him uh, throwing apples at him from a tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because he, he was just chilling and uh, waiting for something to happen. He was bored uh, and just started casting off apples like one at a time, <laughs> waiting to see because they didn't know where he was at, at the moment. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. he just kept throwing apples and seeing them react. And eventually they, uh, they found the tree and stuff like that. And he dropped down and rather than fighting them, you know, just started to talk to them and figure out, ask them a bunch of questions like, where are you from? You know, all that stuff. Yeah. So, so for the, for the three of you, um, yeah, there's this creature and it's of a type none of you have ever encountered before. Um, he, he comes from somewhere, uh, somewhere far to the North. And, um, what is it, what is it about him that's encouraging you to keep him around? Cause he's, he's just curious. He'll just hang out, right. And like see new things and have new experiences. But for you, uh, is it, was there like a sign from, from the gods? Is there, uh, an external reason or do you have your own uh, reasons for, for keeping uh, silent thorn around? Uh, I would say that Kishnagal probably thinks he's somehow a part of the forest because he is of cat like, uh, <laughs> origins in some way. So he probably just thinks he's a part of the forest, maybe, a uh, a test or something sit by, uh, sent by Vana to, to watch over or for me to try to understand or something like that. And that's fair too. Cause the way, um, Thorne looks, he's kind of like a mangy looking cat. Like he does not groom himself. Well, he has like kind of tufts of fur and shit like that. You can see like scars where, um, you know, he's taken battle and stuff. So he, he definitely looks like some sort of mangy forest cat that just happens to be a little more humanoid. Hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I dig it. So what, uh, I guess what, um, what are the, what are the, um, what are the reasons that, I guess you and, uh, Salix, what's that about? Do they not have tieflings where you're from? Have you ever encountered one before or? I don't think so. No. Okay. This so is it's the first just like time. A strange, just a strange creature. Yep. Yeah, That's just cool. a strange creature. Like and that, that, you know, being curious as he is, is like, you're interesting. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. wanting to know more. He's very much, uh, if if you can entertain him or at least make him think about, like, you and what you might be from, if you're new, you're interesting. Uh, right. Depending whether or not your personality captures and retains his, you know, his attention, that's up, you know, that's up to them. Yeah, Silent Silent Thorn just has uh, neo neophilia. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I dig it. Okay, cool. Um, so the, the other thing, the thing that has been happening that I think all of you, um, maybe less, maybe less silent thorn, but the rest of you are certainly aware of, um, between, uh, the mountain, uh, and, uh, between the mountain and the forest between, uh, Vana and, and Parvat, uh, there was a, there's a mighty river, uh, and it flows, uh, it flows from, uh, from the feet of Mount Parvat down through the grasslands, and uh, and into uh, out into the woods where it, it dissipates uh, out in the sea somewhere past the woods. Um, none of you have ever seen the ocean before, but you, it's there somewhere. Um, and uh, and her name is Nadi, and uh, she is drying up. Uh, the uh, the river over the course of the last few few months, probably. Uh, you know, at first the river slowed. Um, she became quiet. Uh, the uh, the animals that that you know, lived within her uh, slowly started to either die off or disappear, uh, and by now um, Nadi is like gone. Uh, it's a the riverbed is dry, and this is affecting all of the all of the land uh, around uh, around here. The grasslands are starting to get um, like weak. Uh, the mountain seems every day to be taller and darker. Um, you know, you can see storm clouds gathering around his head every day, uh, and uh, Vana is becoming sort of folded in on himself. Uh, his his um, his trees are are darkening and kind of um, 
pushing out uh, visit, right? Like you, he's more more surly than usual, um, and something has to be done uh, about it. Um, the 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 humans uh, made some kind of sacrifice, uh, or have uh, have offered made an offering to the the gods of the of the area, and um, I think Ikishnagal through you, the the spirits have made their desires clear, uh, and that is that the four of you go and find out what's happened to uh, to Nadi. She is, uh, yeah. She's she's either intentionally keeping the river from the from the people, or she's uh, she's withdrawing on purpose, um, or, or something bad has happened to her. Have I um, ever spoken or had an audience with? Uh, no, no, no. With her no Nadia is is she's known to be both. Inc- she's incredibly beautiful, but uh, she like like the rivers that make her up uh, is um, elusive. Uh, you can't. You can't I can't hold her down. Um, there's there there's stories among the the humans, and you probably would have picked them up uh, too, about how Mount Mount Parvat uh, and uh, Vana have both always like wanted to to capture her uh, and make make her their bride, and they they've sort of fought over it for for a long time, but uh, she she's never uh, she's never been able to she's never chosen between the two. Okay. Um, and certainly none of you, like none of you have ever directly met with or, or encountered Mount Parvat or Vana or Naadi directly. They're much too powerful. Um, but they speak through their servants. Okay. Uh, we didn't really give descriptions of characters, so I guess we're kind yeah. of, we're, where, where do you want us to, are we standing on well, the side can, of a river? Where, where do you think? Yeah, I mean, we can, we can certainly do that. Um, I think that, uh, the, uh, the group of you, um, you'll, will will fade in on you, uh, in the, in the foothills, uh, in the shadow of Mount Parvat. Uh, it's a, a gloomy, uh, afternoon. The sky is overcast. We can hear rumbles of thundering from, from up in the mountains. Uh, and there is a, a, a cold wind blowing and you're all standing outside of uh, a cave. There's a, a cave entrance that is uh, deep in a, a sort of crevasse of, uh, of rocks. And um, this is the source. This is where the River Nadi once sprung forth from the foothills of Mount Parvat. Um, but now everything here is uh, dead and quiet. Um, there are probably bones of uh, fish like scattered on the rocks. Uh, and you're standing, this, this crevasse was once the, the riverbed uh, where the, the, the spring was. And so um, Nadi's home, her, her shrine, her temple, uh, lies before you uh, in the darkness. But yeah, let's, let's, get a, let's get a read on the characters. Um, I think uh, well, go ahead. Thorne's based. I was just going to say Thorne, while, while this is all happening, he's not standing, he's just by the, like, kind of going through the fish, like, skeletal things and just, like, seeing if there's any any you know flesh left on any of them that he could just eat and he's just like tossing around casually and looking at the riverbed uh you want to describe what yourself looks like max yeah what is uh what does Alan Thorne look like he's got uh bright green eyes slitted eyes um his uh his coloring's a little darker kind of beige it looks generally beige it might have been that it is actually lighter but it's just really dirty um, he has different uh, kind of leopard spots through him. Um, like I said, some scarring across uh, one eye and then like a little bit of scarring that you can see like where there's no fur and you can see his skin there about the only parts. If you look close enough from like different slashes and different battles and things that he's gone through, whether it's scrapping with, you know, an actual enemy or just fucking crazy skin beasts bites. in the wall. Wa- yeah, exactly. <laughs> um sure. Um, that's, that's kind of more or less how he looks. He's wearing, uh, I did choose the glamoured studded leather. So whatever okay. that might look like. I think that's the only thing that looks kind of fancy and very, um, not in keeping with the rest of him. So that's the only thing that's kind of perplexing. It doesn't fit with him. Are the what, studs uh, like ornate? What it, or? Well, what does it currently look like? Right. Cause it doesn't have to just look like, uh, it's true. Armor. Yeah. Um, I think currently, um, I want to say right now. It looks like uh, just regular studded leather. It doesn't look at like anything crazy because that is, you know, I forgot that was a part of the thing of it. Um, right now he's just making it look like rather regular studded leather, but I think its true form is a lot more ornate and whatnot. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I'm, I'm probably hunched over 
and a different pile of uh, fish bones kind of sifting them through my hands. Uh, hunched over, I'm probably the same size in terms of height as everyone. I don't know how, at least of uh, Yom, I don't know how tall everyone else is. Uh, I'm seven foot tall. I have grayish blue skin, uh, but it's kind of hidden under my hide armor. Um, it resembles kind of the, the grasslands, basically. There's a lot of uh, probably patched uh, different pieces of suit, soot and, and dirt kind of just smashed into the armor. Um, I've got a thick orange beard uh, peeking out from behind a mask that I always wear. Uh, the mask is kind of a, an off-kilter uh, with the eyes not necessarily lined up. They're cheaply carven. Uh, does the does the mask look like anything in particular, or is it uh, is it crafted just to be um, like vaguely face looking? It's it's supposed to resemble that of a face, but it's it's crudely carved um, and again off kilter, so it looks kind of uh, misshapen a little bit. Um, and then on the, the edges of the mask, there's, there's four, uh, antlers that come out, uh, which are kind of much larger than everything else, much more, uh, verbose than anything else on my, on my person. Um, and then I have, you know, just, a, a amateur, uh, cobbled shield on my back with a backpack, uh, a hammer. But when I say hammer, it's more just like a wood attached to rock with some different types yeah. of animal skin on it. Um, and then on my waist, there's a, a small gray bag. Uh, and I'm just kind of sifting through some some fish bones, and I uh, we haven't ever heard Tabaxi speak, Max. But what does their language sound like? Their language. <laughs> is it just like whispers, or is it like what does it sound like? Well, do Tabaxi do they have their own their own language? Because you you speak common Dwarven and Primordial, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I so I'm not do. sure. I'm not sure that Tabaxi have uh, a language to okay. themselves. Then I will I will remove that if so. If there yeah. is if there is a language he hasn't spoken in a long while. Okay. Uh, well, then as you're like sifting through the bones and, and looking for meat, I kind of turn back to you and I wouldn't eat that. I eat what I want. Well, I wouldn't eat that. <laughs> There's not much here anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'd go back to to sifting through the bones. I gave him my, my warning. Yeah, and so we, we we get the slow pan of the two of you kind of like digging around in the in the bones looking for, for clues. Uh, and uh, and then we fall uh, camera falls on uh, uh, Salix. Uh, Salix, what are you what are you doing? Um, we we've got a little bit of an idea of what your character looks like, but in this this particular instance, what are you what are you up to? Yeah, so because she's tiefling, uh, Seeing in the dark is very easy. It's not as difficult as someone else might have so straining. So because of my history of upbringing and living out kind of on my own, the intuition is to just do what I want and go off. There's not like a group mentality that happens, right? It's just uh -huh. I want to go see this thing. I'm going to go see this thing. And there's not a lot of barriers, right? I'm not afraid. So as they're kind of digging through these bones, I start heading off kind of towards this thing to see if there's anything else that I can see behind because it's easier. Um, so I am normal human height. Uh, like I said earlier, from a distance, seemingly pretty human, just aside from the black eyes and these big golden kind of horns. Um, my outfit is predominantly leather. So mm -hmm. she's an archer. She's got kind of a more fitted bodice on and uh, like a side protective piece so that when she draws the bow, it's easier to let go. Um, my magical piece is these elven bracers. So they are similar to all the rest of the black leather armor that I have on, but a little bit more delicate. Uh, so the the bracers they'd be um they'd be like sylvan um so they would come to you from uh some some forest like creature where did you where did you get them did the did the like the green man leave them for you as a gift or uh where did you where did you get those yeah so aside from the bracers there's also this ornate kind of golden headpiece that i have as well and these are things that over time have been left after the green man leaves um, he mm. 
comes and he brings a gift occasionally and then leaves. And that's really all that I know of him is that I have to leave when he's there, but he leaves something behind every time that he comes specifically for me. Mm -hmm. So these, there's different pieces of my outfit, the ornate kind of headdress, uh, these bracers, a couple of different pieces, the, the bag that carries all of my arrows is mm -hmm. also a little bit more ornate. Um, and that was left for him as well. Thanks. I dig it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, and so you're, you're sort of like peering into the, uh, uh, into the, the darkness of the, the like cave where the river would like would have come. That's where we see yeah. you as we, we pan across. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, uh, and then Yom, what are you, what are you up to? Oh, Yom is sticking close to, uh, Ikishi Senpa, mm -hmm. uh, kind of digging his toes in the mud a little bit as he just kind of gazes off in a daydream. Um, <clears throat> but what you'd see looking at, at Yam would be uh, a dwarf, about foot, four foot in stature, uh, uh, about a chest length, very unruly black beard, uh, some twigs and leaves stuck in it. Um, looks like barefoot, uh, huh. Um, a mantle, like a, the, a head of bear as a helmet that flows down to a cloak behind him as uh, he took the his, his totem spirit of the bear to protect him. And uh, and then just using the rest of, of this animal that, that gave his life for his protection, uh, maybe some, some gauntlets wrapped with leather and um, I wouldn't say quite pants, but loincloth-ish mm -hmm. of the rest of the bear with uh, 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 loosely tied belt okay cool yeah so you uh at the at the urgings of uh and i guess this is this i guess this is a good question um did when you when you met with the the spirits uh Ikishnagal, did they did they come and speak like only to you uh or uh or was was anyone else present for that uh that imperative uh i i think the the spirits kind of they're in the same world, but they don't necessarily reside on the same. I, I don't know. Like they spoke to me, but the others knew that they were there, but they couldn't necessarily see them. You kind of have to have the sight to see them. You have to to know that they exist to begin with and you, believe that they exist. You got to eat, eat the right mushrooms. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so when they, when they showed up, like people can kind of sense, you know, the, the hair kind of stood up on the back of their neck. They could sense that something was, different about uh, the, the sur their surroundings, but they didn't exactly know what. Um, and mm -hmm. then you kind of shift into my sight and I just see this grand creature standing in front of me with you know, some sort of aura around it that's kind of blinding. Uh, you're not supposed to mm -hmm. stare exactly at them, et cetera. Okay, cool. So a, uh, yeah, uh, the, the spirits spoke to you uh, and told you uh, that, yeah, that Nadi uh, had, had vanished uh, and to go and figure it out but uh, the others, uh, you, you kind of had to tell them. Um, so I guess that de facto puts you in charge, right? Uh, I guess so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are you, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, you've, you've followed, I mean, you've been traveling for a long time to get here, right? Through the, through the foothills, um, following the, the once mighty river, uh, climbing up through the hills. And any further east, and you are you are in territory that even you're not allowed to visit, right? If you go if you go any further east, you risk the ire of the dwarves, uh, and uh, you're in Mount Mount Parvat's domain. So, uh, yeah, you've you've reached where. So this this place, to be clear with everybody, this place is uh, it's forbidden, right, to humans. Um, it is expressly like you you shouldn't be entering Naadi's house. This is where she lives. Um, so if you choose to do so, you do so knowing that you're going to have to justify it later. If you walk in there and she's just in there and she's in a bad mood, you're going to have to explain to her why you've just walked into her house. Um, but, uh, you know, um, what do you want to do, I guess, is my question. Uh, you said the riverbed was pretty dried up. Is there still, like, plant life around? Um, I don't think so. I think that, that it's, it's kind of barren. It's, yeah, rocky. Um, you can see the the water marks uh, on the uh, on the edges of this this divot where the the spring would have come. Um, there is 
mineral deposits uh, kind of in the in the area. And then, yeah, like bones of, of fish that had nowhere to go when the river receded and <clears throat> disappeared. OK. Um, um, yeah, I think that without the water of uh, of Nadi to to feed them, any of the river adjacent plants have died. There's maybe some um, some hill like scrub brush that has died away uh, recently. Uh, with the the water being gone, okay. Um, well, I guess after I kind of th- not throw but place the the fish remains back on it, I turn to the rest of the group. Uh, is Silent Thorn still trying to pick off meat. Um, no, he's kind of giving that up. He's like dusting himself off a little bit, um, and looking at the uh, the two of you guys or the three of you guys, and like, what the hell are we doing here, anyways? I kind of look towards uh, Yom. My eyes roll a little bit behind the mask. I turn back to to the Tabaxi. We're going inside. Inside? Where exactly? I turn around and gesture towards the the grand cave in front of us. Oh, a little cave spelunking. Okay, sounds fun. Uh, I turn towards Yom and say. Are you ready? And I'll kind of like snap in my daydream as I'm sitting there picking, picking fleas out of my chest here. Oh, oh. yeah, uh, let's go. Let's uh, naughty, naughty river. Naughty's been naughty. We got a teacher. Let what? What are we doing here? Uh, once again, roll my eyes. Turn to the, uh, I guess I wanted to say demon, but it's not necessarily a demon. The <laughs> some some people would call her that yep yeah i, I turned turn towards uh do we say salix 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 now i'm pronouncing Salix. the third way oh god <laughs> i turned towards sorrow let's go with that there you go <laughs> and uh say how about you you ready i don't know what awaits us but this is not good yeah and i just kind of look at them because i'm already standing closer to the entrance of the cave. And Mm -hmm. this whole being cautious thing is new to me, right? Cautious around humans, but not walking into a cave. So I just turn to them and I'm like, yeah, it looks clear. I don't think there's anybody here. You can't see anything. So I think- What's what's everybody's uh, passive perception? Just so I have it written down. Uh, 14? I have my character sheet up. Give me a second. Is it 10 plus your... All right. It's 10 plus whatever 10, you would yeah, add to the roll 16, if you roll. Uh, 16. 16? Okay. Um, it is... Higher than 16? Uh, 12. I think. Okay. All right. Okay. Passive wisdom on the sheet, right? Perception. Yeah. Yeah, passive perception. Okay. Someone sneaking. So... You, I think, Yom, as as everybody starts to to approach, you hear... The sound uh, above you, somewhere, somewhere up in the the mountain proper, in the dark, the darkness of the mountains, you hear that sort of clattering sound of uh, of a stone being knocked off a mountain path. Uh, you know, stones bouncing down the the shale sides of the mountains, um, and you get the you get the distinct feeling that you're being watched. Mm. What the hell was that shit? Did you feel you that? guys see that up there? I feel a lot of things. What do you mean? Well, well, let's like, talk about that. What I else feel are you feeling? Like, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe the spirits are watching us. I don't know. Or just it's be, just, just be cautious, guys. All right. What? Uh, what was that? Sorrow. I said, or it's just a rock. That's a good point. Could just be a rock. Yeah, mm. rocks just don't tip themselves over, and the wind doesn't feel strong enough to do it. Hmm. All yeah. right, just just letting you guys know what I hear. We'll keep Thank an eye you. out. Appreciate that. That's that's good. Um, and then I, I guess I would start walking towards the uh, the cave mouth, or into the cave mouth if we're close enough. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, you can you can head in. No problem. Um, so you uh, you you head into the uh, you head into the mountain, and uh, I think that. We we see the four of you descend. You're you're kind of going down. It's not 
it's not like a clear like path. You you really do have to sort of climb slowly and like gently make your way down into the uh, into the spring. It's normally hidden by by water and also magic. Um, but now it's just it's open. The rocks are still slick uh, and cold, and there's uh, there's no clear way in. So as long as you take your time, uh, especially uh, especially you, Th- Silent Thorn, you're you're okay. Like you can just kind of hop from rock to rock and like yeah. climb your way down. You're you're pretty nimble. Um, but for the rest of you, it's a it's a bit treacherous going. Uh, so let's let's get uh, let's get athletics checks from from everybody. Um, Athletics or, I guess, uh, acrobatics, if you prefer. Yeah, I was going to say uh, athletics, please. Just acrobatics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm looking at something real quick. <clears throat> uh, um, I'll just roll a normal athletics check. That's fine. Okay. Never mind. Oh, it's not no. fine. It's not fine at all. <laughs> That's the one. That is definitely not fine. It's not fine at all. Um, I should have fucking turned into a goddamn spider like I wanted darn to. Darn out right. All right. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. So up. what? Uh, what's the order in which everyone is descending into uh, into this uh, into this cavern? <laughs> well, I guess JP would have went first, and I would have wanted to follow directly behind you. Yeah, I, 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 in the back. I said I was going in first, so I'll stick to that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, the, maybe the reason nobody else like slips and falls is because you are the one that finds the dangerous parts. I think as you're climbing down, uh, Ikishnagal, you, uh, you, you get to a point where you have to turn around and actually physically climb down a, a, the side of a slick rock face. Um, and partway down, you, you reach out with a foot and you, you know, press it onto a, a, an edge and start to lower your weight onto it. And then it, uh, it comes loose and crumbles and you, you fall. Uh, you fall uh, onto your back uh, several several feet below, uh, and you take uh, let's see, take nine damage. <laughs> uh, and you you like yeah, slip and fall, land on your back, and there's like a bunch of rubble that kind of crumbles around you. Um, but you you found your way to the bottom of the pit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how far up did I fall? Like if I turn back around and and turn toward the cave mouth, what do I see? It's like 20 feet up to where your friends are, and then maybe another 10 or 15 feet. The whole thing is maybe a 40 foot climb down. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I turn back. And like you said, probably the reason why everyone else makes is be careful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See you fall. Oh, Kushi Bear, are you okay? Oh, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you Kushi sure? Bear. Yes, get down here. Well, you, you jealous cat man? Call him Kushi Bear? Cushy beer. Not my business. Whatever. Let's go. <laughs> <clears throat> so the, the rest of you reach the bottom of the uh, the cavern, uh, making your way down the down the rocks, and uh, I don't think everyone has dark vision. Is anybody not capable of seeing in the dark? I uh, don't believe I do. Yeah, Kishnagal, I think you don't have uh, dark vision. <laughs> I fear this leader without dark vision. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got it. Um, and so I probably once I turn to them and say, you know, be careful, I turn back around, uh, and let me see, can Druidcraft project? I don't think it, it has the same effects as the light spell. It instantly lights or snuff out a candle, a torch or a small campfire. So yeah, I'll just have, I'll like have a torch and then I snap and like flame produces on the, the head of the torch. Okay. Yeah. So you've you've got a torch. You're gonna light. Yeah. Yeah. I pull one out. Okay. And All they're right. they're much more crude than what a standard torch would look like to people. It's it's literally just a piece of uh, wood with like probably some spider webs or something on the end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like sap. Right. Pitch from a tree. Yeah. Yeah. So it burns a little bit slower. So Adam, okay. longer. Adam, walking in here, do we hear like any drips of any kind of water source at all, or any bats no. in the area? No, but once the once you light the the torch, uh, you raise your your arm, your back aching, uh, you can uh, you can see around you. You're in you're in a cavern, um, and it's uh, it, it leads into a tunnel leading ahead as far as the light will go. Uh, it's pretty tall for you, uh, Yom, but for everybody else, especially Akishnagal, you'll have to duck to to move forward. Um, but 
the thing that is unusual for you is that there are uh, fungal growths all over the like walls and the ground. Uh, clusters of uh, thick, uh, sort of resinous-looking mushrooms, those sort of shelf fungi that are sticking up out of the wall. Um, and uh, yeah, if if there is any moisture down here, these mushrooms are are swallowing it up to uh, mm. to fuel their growth. And in places, they're they're like cracking and breaking the uh, breaking the walls. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can see ahead of you uh, a long uh, a long dark tunnel. Am I the only one without dark vision? Yeah. Okay. I think I think you are. Do I know this? Is this something that I've experienced <clears throat> thus far? I mean, I think a group of you have been around each other long enough to know that that you know, who can see in the dark and who can't. Okay. Well, then I I think like once they make it down, I realized that lighting the torch was completely pointless, and all druid craft snuff out the light, uh, and then uh, wild shape into a uh, giant wolf spider. Do giant wolf spiders have uh, the ability to see in the dark? They do indeed. They have Excellent. dark vision 60 feet and blind sight for 10. Is this, is this the first time you've done this? I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that you've probably, maybe not in front of you, but I've definitely <laughs> like left the camp or left the group and come back. Or you've seen or heard like animal noises, animalistic noises of some sort. And you've always wondered like what that was. And then I come back and maybe my skin's a little bit. Uh, roughed up, but you just never understood what was happening. This is the first time we're seeing it like proper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I would, I would know this thing as well, right? Yeah, because like, I, I like taught you this. Yeah, I taught you how oh, to do yeah. this. Well, as soon as he changed, I'm like, oh, everyone stand back. He's losing control. I'll conquer this foul beast and attempt to mount and ride you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you ride there? Thor uh... like, does jump back for a second, like, what the fuck is going on? I guess you could ride a giant wolf spider. I mean, a giant. Yeah. Are you large? Are you large or medium sized? Uh, I'm trying to find the size. Uh, if you're, yeah, the if size you're medium, is medium. You can't. Yeah, you can't ride a medium creature. He's the same size as you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You like go to jump on, and I scurry off five feet or something. <laughs> and you fall on your ass. Yeah. Fall on my ass. Ah! So is there is there anything about your your spider form that makes you look that looks different that would like set you aside from? Uh, I, I mean, aside the, from the fact that you're a very big spider. The but. patterns are orange. Uh, oh, okay. Like the the different, um, I don't know what the pattern would look like, but the pattern on spider, or, may, or maybe the back end, the uh, I don't know the you say anatomy it looks like of spiders. Pumpkin? I would say like the back end, the the fur on the back of the spiders is orange. Uh, it's cool. not. It's not like a like a. It's more like a brown recluse or a tarantula in in uh, like anatomy. And, Dude, fuck and those spiders. Like those things don't back down. <laughs> Seriously, like a wolf, like a wolf like, spider, basically. Have you had much encounters with the brown recluse? Any of you guys? I've not. They Thankfully, do not no. back away. <laughs> they are very stand their ground. <laughs> it's it's off putting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you you transform uh, into uh, into your your spider form, and uh, and now uh, the group of you, uh, I guess, are gonna head down the uh, head down the tunnel. Is that the plan? Yeah, what could go wrong? Yeah, okay. I think we start making. There's nothing our way. spooky down there. Yeah. All right, so you uh, you start to head down towards the uh, down down into the earth towards the uh, the end of this tunnel, and uh, we well let's fa fade out on our uh, on our action. We'll take a break here, and we'll uh, pick up when we come back. Cool. Yeah, let's take our uh, our first break. So I got three hours left to go here on the premiere of uh, the special three shot, uh, and I'll talk more about that in the break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 